from Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning to read with, with thir verse 13. Now, if some of you who are so brilliant and remember a little bit about last Sunday, you'll say, oh, you read that last Sunday. And you were right. I did. I want to share a little bit more about that particular passage of Scripture. I just didn't want anybody to tell me, you read that last Sunday. I didn't that. Um, <laughs> That very day, two of them were going into a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. I'm talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation which you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. <coughs> but we had hoped that he was one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since this has happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. And they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O oh, foolish men, and slow to heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He appeared to be going further. But they constrained him, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread, and he blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they recognized him. And he vanished out of their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while we talked, while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they arose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. I'm not sure how many of you ladies would particularly be um, overjoyed if you had a guest that's just showed up at your Christmas dinner or some birthday party or something and somebody just came and joined you. And uh, you weren't sure who he was, what was going on here. This is what's happening on the road to Emmaus. Here, these two fellows are walking, and they're talking about what has transpired. They are engrossed in the hour of the day, that which was pertinent to them, that which they had hoped for, and it had dashed from them. And now they're seeking the probabilities or the improbabilities of could he really be alive? Would you be satisfied 
If the women that went to the cemetery and they saw angels and uh, some have said, uh, and as the scripture pointed out, they had a vision of angels. Uh, I would have liked that in interpretation of it a little different, but that's the way they wrote it. And uh, so they're coming back with that word. They're not sure whether they've seen Jesus or not. And the disciples, two disciples run over there and they look at it, look at it. <coughs> now would you be satisfied with that? That he's alive? Would that satisfy you? Not me. I want more evidence than that. That you're, yep, you saw it was empty and I, I can leave that from you. But I want to know whether he really is alive. From the time of the resurrection to the ascension is 40 days. And those 40 days are of vital importance. There is more written about those 40 days in the scripture than from the day of his birth to the time of his public ministry. The term of 40 days for those who study, study the uh, various things of what numbers mean. Seven has been defined in the scriptures or we have determined <coughs> that's the perfect number. 40 has been defined as the probation period to really determine is it really true or is it. So as we look at these 40 days, stop for a moment and uh, look back and the children of Israel were in the wilderness for 40 days. For 40 days God is now going to try them because of some things that they did. Uh, that, uh, are you really ready to go into the promised land? And he gives them 40 years to think about it. Uh, be a little kind of, I'm getting a little impatient, but uh, nevertheless, and they said, yes, we're ready to go, and they did go. And God asked them, some very, asked them to do some very difficult things, and uh, if time permits someday, I'll share some of those things with you. Then Elijah was four, 40 days, and he fasted and prayed to know the will of God. Jesus was 40 days in the wilderness fasting before he started his public ministry. And sometimes when people get so excited about that Christian religion, say, oh, I want to do this and I want to do this and I want to do Just, whoa, oh, let's stop for a minute. And can you go through a probation period to prepare? During the earlier years, there were those who wanted to go into the mission field. And uh, that oftentimes their dedication and commitment, we'd send them out to the mission field. And we soon, soon learned there needed to be some time of probation because only uh, a third of them returned. For every three that we sent out to the mission field, two wouldn't go back. They needed some preparation. Are you able to stand the test of time? And so as we look at this, this time, this is the time that Jesus is going to reveal himself. For 40 days he re unfolds himself to various people. He revealed himself on the road to Emmaus. He revealed himself on the, the Sea of Galilee. He revealed himself on the Sea of Galilee. He unveiled himself at numerous of times that when you culminate all of this together, 